you know, another way to sort of make uh, uh, the overall experience a bit smoother and, and more intuitive for end users is, uh, is through UI customization. Uh, so Web Viewer is actually quite a customizable uh, toolkit, and, and that can really uh, make a big difference in how easy it is to use uh, for, for, for a lot of different users. Um, so there are many users uh, who are not necessarily uh, so tech savvy uh, and you know, might not have much background in, in using uh, um, various uh, computer interfaces or uh, tablets or other devices. Uh, you know, they might be a bit uh, technophobic kind of, uh, you know, if you forgive the term, uh, but, but maybe just are a bit uh, hesitant to learn a new user interface. And, and for those users who are, who are not uncommon in the construction and uh, uh, in industry, um, for those users, having a very simple interface is a big deal uh, that can really have a big impact on whether they're able to learn this interface and be be productive within it. Um, so uh, we've we've really crafted Web Viewer to be as customizable as possible with that in mind. So being able to address uh, those sorts of users and tailor things exactly for them. Um, so we have a few different ways of customizing Web Viewer's interface. Probably the easiest is through our high-level APIs. Um, so we have just uh, uh, you know very simple APIs for for disabling various elements on a on on a given uh, uh, web viewer uh, instance. Um, so things like toggling a dark theme off and on. Um, if we wanted to uh, remove different annotation tools, as I was mentioning, so maybe just slimming these down to kind of the bare minimum that someone might want. Um, so just certain certain tools, maybe just a rectangle and a freehand and a highlight, and and that way it's you know many fewer buttons and many fewer choices that have to be made for a user. Uh, rather, they're just guided to exactly uh, uh, the tools that they that they need to get um, uh, the job done. We we can also turn off some different features in the UI here as well. So if we wanted to uh, remove text selection or printing or downloading, just to kind of lock down the content a bit more, uh, that's that's something that's very easy to do. And in in terms of how we invoke these, um, this code snippet here kind of shows that off a bit. So. Uh, at, at a low level, if you're if you're not that familiar with uh, JavaScript or how to how to invoke Web Viewer on a page, uh, what this snippet of code is doing is 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 showing how to bring up Web Viewer, how to instantiate it, uh, and then how to configure it. So so after the Web Viewer object has been created on a web page, we can go through and disable certain things. And these these APIs make it uh, qu quite easy to to d disable these discrete buttons. Or uh, if we wanted to uh, turn off some of these panels, uh, like say the the thumbnail panel here or the commenting panel here, uh, those also are, are quite easy to remove uh, or the page number or you know, things like that. So uh, yeah, this is, all, this is all highly customizable. Notice also that we're, we're running this configuration code uh, within the client side web page. So, so essentially, um, after we've loaded up the web viewer element on this client side page, then uh, th this code that could be added um, after web viewer is instantiated uh, it, it is specific to this browser here. So the reason that's important is that that means that we can customize the UI on a user by user basis. Uh, and this is very common in AEC uh, workflows that, that some users uh, might need one particular interface and some users, maybe an architect, uh, might need many more uh, 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 tools within the user interface. So being able to streamline them uh, for those particular users can really help uh, tailor the interface for them and kind of guide them uh, through what they need to do. And you can actually um, add on to that a bit through our custom annotation functionality as well. So any of these annotations that we show here, like uh, this highlight annotation or uh, some of the shapes that we have, you can actually make customized versions of each of those. Our, our guides walk through this in, in great detail, actually. Um, so here under the annotation guide, if I click on custom annotations, uh, we walk through exactly how to take an existing uh, annotation within our toolkit and create a new one out of it. So it's uh, in, in this guide, uh, it's, it's how to create a triangle annotation. Um, let me see if there's a screenshot of it. Here we are. So, so this is what it ends up looking like. Um, but but the, the goal there is to give you uh, kind of the steps to go through to, to take one of our built-in uh, annotation tools and provide whatever defaults might make sense uh, for a given user. Um, so for example, um, what we might have is, is um, the ability to draw a rectangle, uh, but then add in maybe, maybe custom uh, metadata to that to, to describe, uh, say, the kind of thing that's being denoted by drawing the shape over it. So for example, I could go through a document and uh, uh, inside of, let's go back to this, uh, this blueprint document to maybe make this a little more clear. 
So earlier we talked about um, a, a plumber who might be going on site and uh, uh, kind of viewing this document and maybe maybe looking for issues that that might be present inside of uh, uh, this building. So. Um, you know, perhaps what they could have then are, are multiple tools. So you could have uh, one one square drawing annotation tool, and that could have custom information embedded within it, saying, uh, you know, this is this is a piece of uh, equipment uh, that's that's too near a pipe. Uh, and then we might have another uh, kind of annotation tool that says, uh, well, well, this issue here uh, with a blue rectangle means that there's a leakage here. Uh, so it's a bit more of an emergency, and maybe uh, is dealt with by different personnel. Um, so, so by being able to customize the annotations, we can we can simplify the workflow for users, uh, kind of automating uh, some of the more mundane things they might have to do, like alerting different users about particular issues or uh, consolidating issue lists for uh, a report or something like that. Uh, in, instead, by simply marking things with different kinds of annotations tailored just for them, uh, th that kind of that kind of um, automation and consolidation can be done automatically. Um, and as we saw uh, previously in, in Peter's presentation, uh, the, the annotation states are, are built into that kind of workflow. So um, we, we provide uh, this set of, of annotation states because that's what the PDF specification uh, says to provide by default. But these can actually be customized on a per annotation basis. So if you had a particular workflow that should be followed after just making that annotation, like if it should go to different users or if different states should be followed, like maybe uh, there should be a state here where we alert uh, the building management and then it has to be assigned to another particular person and then they have to verify that it's there and then it might go to somebody else to uh, fix it. And then you know maybe another party to uh, verify that change or maybe someone from the city has to come down and, and, and double check that. Um, and, and all of those different states could be could be kind of encoded into the workflow here. And, and again, on a per annotation kind of basis. So it's almost like you can encode the workflow uh, for each kind of task that a user should perform uh, directly in these annotation states. And uh, because of that, enable users to kind of guide themselves through, through whatever workflow you'd like them to follow um, in, in their day-to-day -day job. So it's a very powerful mechanism uh, that kind of builds on, on this, uh, this annotation and collaboration uh, uh, infrastructure that we have built into WebViewer. Now, besides uh, this method of, of UI customization, of using these high-level APIs to do things like turn different buttons on or create new kinds of annotations that show up in the toolbar, uh, we have other kinds of customizations within WebViewer as well. Um, so one of the most important ones is that we actually have published our full UI source code uh, to GitHub. Um, so uh, it's React-based uh, JavaScript code. Um, and it's there available for you to download and try out or to, uh, to fork the code and make your own uh, version of the UI. Um, so if you have WebViewer license, then you can always uh, take and reskin anything about this interface. So if there's uh, you know, something about how the pages are displayed or um, you know, anything about this existing user interface that, that you'd like to change around and, and tailor for different users, maybe uh, provide a sort of document drop down for them to, to cycle through a, a set of documents. Uh, all, all of that would be possible. Um, you can really change anything uh, about this user interface and, and skin it for, for your, own, uh, your own usage. Um, and then yet another way you can customize the interface uh, is by leveraging WebViewer within an existing interface that you might have. Um, so it's not uncommon for customers to come to us, um, you know, after years maybe of being in business, and uh, they they may have developed an, a a document viewer that their users are quite used to. Um, to sort of show that off, we have just this flipbook sample here. Um, so this is this is uh, an open source flipbook sample that we we got a hold of. We didn't develop this ourselves, but we are leveraging Web Viewer within this sample. So what we did was we uh, uh, loaded up WebViewer and uh, leveraged it headlessly. So without that user interface, uh, just taking advantage of its lower level uh, functionality and capability to convert a PDF document into an image. And so what we're doing is going through each of the PDF pages, converting those to images, and, and then showing them in this flipbook view here. 
So that way, if if you had a user or a set of users who you know were very used to a particular interface and would be very confused by any of that changing, you can still provide that same exact experience to them, uh, but take advantage of web viewers rendering under the hood. So uh, you can have you know that same consistent rendering cross platform that all other users are are taking advantage of, um, very accurate rendering and performance since it's in the client side browser, uh, and uh, the ability to take advantage of web viewers uh, capability is for, for modifying uh, PDF documents under the hood. Uh, so enabling signing and redaction and all kinds of other workflows. Um, so you can you can kind of uh, give them these additional capabilities uh, w without having to confuse them by, by migrating them to some uh, new user interface. So, so these three methods of customizing the user interface, um, either through high level APIs or through uh, uh, changing the source code that we have available on GitHub, uh, or by simply leveraging WebViewer's toolkit uh, within a third-party UI. Uh, all of these are different ways that you can you can provide WebViewer functionality to, to users uh, and uh, w w without having to, um, say, overwhelm or disorient them. So this can be a very uh, useful way of getting onboarded uh, as, as well uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, making that transition to PDF-Tron a bit more seamless.